at that we've got a special third nerd today bradley brownell hello bradley brownell hello bid nerds we... so happy to be here uh it, it is <laughs> <That> was... race <laughs> we're screwing this whole thing up have we ever done yeah. this before i'm gonna say no uh here we go we got all three of us there on is. there there's bradley is back uh <laughs> hey just so everybody knows my name is john polnick uh we record the show from las vegas in the downtown uh, Las Vegas uh, Container Park. My partner Bradley, uh, not my partner Bradley Brownell. He's the guest. My partner is Michael Deeb in San Francisco in the studio, uh, in the basement. How you doing, Michael Deeb? I'm freezing. I feel like I'm in Cleveland. It's so cold out here. <laughs> All right. With that horrible opening to the show, uh, just to, for the new people who thought they'd try out Bid Nerds and now they're going, I don't know why I clicked on this piece of dog meat. This- uh, yeah. This is the first episode you guys have ever done? This is the very first episode first. we've ever done. Yeah, we've yeah, never yeah, done this yeah. before. Yeah, we have yeah. no clue. Yeah, people love you. It's just time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are new, who found yourself in here, thanks for joining us. Uh, what we do on the show is we find the most interesting car of the day uh, from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We have a little conversation about that car, and we make a prediction as to what's going to happen with that car's auction at the end. Will it sell? Will it not sell? And if so, for how much uh so it's kind of like the price is right only we don't win anything uh so play along you can do that in the comments uh we do we take a little break in the middle of the show uh at that point you can put your bid in as well guys let's get right to the car today's car is golly this is a not just interesting car but a beautiful car michael deeb you're you're grinning oh, from ear to ear i know you're excited yeah. about this one what do we got look at that guys well jp oh. you know like like yeah. uh, you know you're supposed to eat uh 80 percent for nutrition and 2 percent for fun um we do the show you know 80 percent for porsche and then 20 percent for fun this to me is fun what we're looking at on bring trailer is a 1968 fiat dino spider off out of north salem new york um, so for those who don't know, uh, Ferrari was going broke. Maybe you saw the Ford Ferrari movie. Um, Ferrari was going broke, and he wound up selling a portion of the company to Fiat. The first thing Fiat asked for in exchange, um, actually, it might have even gone in Berg, the other way around. Uh, Enzo wanted to uh, race a motor that was designed by his son. His son went to engineering school, and Ferrari didn't have the bandwidth to be- produce um, enough examples of the road version of that car with that motor to homologate the engine for racing. Um, So Fiat said, well, we'll do it for you. And it gave Fiat the chance to feature a car with a Ferrari powertrain um, that would be an upmarket car for Fiat that could theoretically compete with some of the other classic European cars from Porsche and Jaguar and things of that nature. As it turns out, we would note, Fiat charged an arm and a leg for this car, and it really didn't sell very well, but it doesn't make the car any less exciting. Um, This particular car is in, it looks like, completely refurbished uh, cosmetically and mechanically. It looks to be um, almost new, which is pretty nice. Um, Some details that are interesting. Um, It's a two-liter all-aluminum V6. It makes about 160 horsepower, but everybody recognizes that that was probably um, written to be underpowered compared to the Ferrari version of the car, which made 180 horsepower. The motors are virtually identical, so this is probably 180 horsepower. Um, it feels really good. It's a five-speed manual transmission. It runs the rear wheels. Uh, it has dual exhaust, um, and it features this beautiful pin and farina bodywork, which looks stunning. Um, the steering wheel that's on the car is a Nardi. That is incorrect. The Dino badge that you can see on the back deck lid is way out of place. That did not come on the car originally. That yellow badge on top of the deck lid, um, that's a shame that they put that on there. Uh, the other thing that's very interesting to me, um, according to the serial number, 949 this is a series two of the of, of the two liter dino i was under the impression that all of those came with a wooden dashboard 
The dashboard in this one is just black. Uh, and I thought that was only on the Series 1. So that's kind of an interesting thing to me. I'm not really sure if that is correct. But otherwise, this car looks really nice. Uh, the wheels are beautiful. They're magnesium chromadoras, and it's got those knockoffs. Uh, really neat car. Super fun to drive. Um, Silver is not my favorite color, but boy, it sure looks good in the studio shots that were taken. And, uh, you know, Dinos were never really sold in this country, so pretty much all of them are gray market cars. It'll be interesting to see where this one goes. Um, obviously, my father had one, and uh, and so, you know, in my days, dad drove the Fiat Dino uh, more than just about any car. We had sort of a second car for us uh, in my lifetime with him growing up. Uh, so I have a massive soft spot in my heart for this car and all things Fiat D. Uh, even the are cool, even though I've never owned one. Uh, the spiders have a short wheelbase and they fly. More interesting to know, they later made a like a, a second version of this car with a 2.4 liter motor and they upgraded the transmission of that car to a ZF. Um, at the end of this uh, description, they write that it's a ZF five speed. And I think somebody at Bring a Trailer wrote that. Um, but it should not be correct. If the guy who had this car upgraded to his, he would have mentioned that in the comments. That I paid the money to put the better transmission in the car. Um, but as it was listed, I think it was listed correctly. Um, and so that is an interesting aspect of the of the thing. I don't think it's going to hold the value back. Don't think this this car definitely didn't come with this stuff. So I don't think that's in there because it wasn't really noted as such. I think it was just one of those last little sentences thrown in by the the writer at uh, Bring a Trailer. So I turn to you, Bradley, and say, have you ever experienced a Fiat Dino Cooper Spider 2 liter 2.4 any time in all of the driving that you have done? And if you did, what did you think of it? I can't say that I have, fortunately. Um, no. It looks fantastic. Okay. Uh, and I love that engine. Um, I have been in the Dino Dino, not the yeah. Fiat Dino. Right. That's uh, well, technically was a Ferrari, but um, this looks amazing, and I would absolutely love to drive one. The mm. car itself looks really well done. Um, I am running away scared at the Folda tires that are like I know, right? basement <laughs> yeah. garbage tires from. They're also from, from 08. <laughs> oh wait, date coded oh one oh eight. That is insane. Um, so they're you know they're asking a premium or they're trying, they're they're gonna get. Them. For a car that at the very least needs tires. Um, boy, uh, I'm, I'm going to say that, um, you know, looking at some historic data here on Bring a Trailer, I'm going to say this one is a new record on Bring a Trailer. I'm going to go 149,000. Oh, oh he's going right to the bid. All right. Look right at that. To right to the bid. Well, J look JP, at this what, do you guy. Think, what do you think of the car? <clears throat> um, I've cut, we've covered a couple of these on the show because I love the car so much. It's it's one of my all time favorite cars, and it's it's probably because John, you know, we had my dad and I had that car for like a decade. I mean, I I probably put you know like shit eight or thousand miles on most things. You know, we drove that car everywhere. Um, I I hope that I get one, and that you get to drive it, JP, because I think you're gonna love it. Um, as a Porsche guy and a Cabrio guy, I think this car will tick box you. But what do, you, what do you think of when you get this car? Certainly without the wooden dash, it's got a very industrial, very purposeful look. It looks a little racier um, with that uh, black dash. What do you think? Yeah, I love the black dash. I love this car. I heart this car so much. It is just beautiful. I, In a lot of ways, I like it better than the Ferrari version. Um, and it is just you know, I, it, my first car was a Fiat, uh, and it was an absolute piece of junk. Um, but you know, when I drove it, I was thinking I was driving this. You know, that's that's what I wanted. <laughs> uh, but instead, my little 850 Sport that I had to push all the time. Uh, but look, there, it, uh, it's just I I think its value is going to be pretty high because it comes with a, um, you know, a can of or. A, a jar of sriracha there and i know that's doubled or twice you know the price of that has really gone up um michael deeb i gotta go to you though i mean it, it is a benefit to me to bid last because i really wouldn't yeah. have the slightest idea uh where to yeah. start with this car um i don't know if i'd ever even really seen one until we went to uh, you know, the pit stop, uh, you know, down there in your neck of the woods with Rafi's the place. Blue one. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, and that blue th one. was that your, that was that your dad's car? Or? No, that, the, the, but the, 
you know, Rafi has uh, whittled down to like six customers that have mm. these incredible collections of cars, and so he works exclusively for them. One of his it still has my dad's car, and he repainted it in dark blue metallic, like a midnight mm. blue. But that lighter blue car that we saw, uh, Rafi acquired. I had a chance to buy it, and I kind of missed it. Um, Rafi sort of has sold to a customer, but then the engine kind of conked out. So he rebuilt the motor, and he's going to repaint the car. The car will come back and be available, but it's probably out of my price range at that point. Um, as Rafi's going to build that motor up and put a fresh paint job on it, it'll be a $200,000 plus car. This car is interesting, John. I My bid, my original knee-jerk reaction to this car is $140,000. There are a couple of little things that are off on this car, but I think those are things that could easily be rectified. And then you could have a car that, you know, with a, with a nice restoration and good panel gaps, and, and as long as this car's not smoking out of one bank of the cylinders, um, this could be a car that you could theoretically show and compete with. You could take it to car shows or, or have a really nice car to take out and rally. Um, I wouldn't be surprised because the studio shots look so good uh, if Bradley is correct. But I think the real, the correct value for this car should be 140 grand. But if he wins one, or it's up to the $150,000 range. I wouldn't be surprised because it, it's all there and it looks like it's nicely done. So, JP, I turn it back to you. Yeah, I don't, I mean, look, again, I'm going to go right back to you because I think it's time to bid. Uh, Bradley already yeah. threw his number down, so what's yours? Yeah, 140. I, I, that was my energy reaction oh, was 140. It. That's what I had written. Bradley came in over, but uh, I don't think he said if he wins, I wouldn't surprise you know, I, this is one of those cars that um, is sought after by a certain type of person that I think may uh, be less affected uh, by all the things that are going on in the economy that might be pushing prices down. Um, this is the kind of car that is not on, you know, if someone's out there going, oh, I want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on a car, I want to spend $150,000 on a car. This is not a car that's on most people's list. This is a car that gets added to uh, a collection so and you know there are not a lot of them ever pop up so i'm guessing whoever wants this car has wanted this car for a long time and if they, so yeah i i'm what was your number deep 140 bradley at 149 140 149 i'm gonna split the difference between you guys because i'm gonna be a dirty dirty fence sitter and say 145 because <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> all right guys what do you think out there uh watching this is this uh is this fiat dino gonna bring the bank uh do you want that can of sriracha with this thing i think it, it, it it's spicy i want this car but i don't know if one hundred fifty thousand dollars if i'm gonna if i would try to buy this thing for that i think well i don't know uh let's find out now's the time to put your bid in and uh guys we're gonna find out how much this car sold for right after this Hey guys, I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's Guys, G-Y-X underscore customs. That's how you spell it, Guys Customs bracelets. These things are amazing. Check them out. They're handmade in America, custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car. These things are unbelievable. I have three or four of them myself. My partner, Michael Deeb, has a bunch of them. Uh, they're pretty addictive once you get one. Each one of them are bespoke. We're talking, uh, we're talking carbon fiber. We're talking titanium. We're talking stainless steel glass. There's none of this cheap Chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there. These ones are super high quality. They're made right here in America. When you go to Guys Customs on Instagram, it's about the only place that you can order one of these. Uh, when you DM the artist, you're actually reaching the real artist when you DM Guys Customs at Instagram. Uh, and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch that special car or that special person that has a special watch or a special car and they want something really, really cool, uh, in their life. These are the, they make the most amazing gifts. Um, I get compliments on mine all the time. Everywhere I go, people are like, wow, that's really cool. You can see in the pictures, uh, you know, these beads, the, the colored beads, are PTS. They're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car 
or your watch. It's unbelievable. You got to get one of these guys, customs, bracelets. Check them out. They support us, uh, and we really, really, really want to support them. Guys, customs, bracelets. All right, let's get back to the bids. Let's find out how much that car sold for today. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Bid Nerds. Your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We're here in the future. Bradley Brennell left us. He's going back to his museum. He's wandering around his amazing collection of cars there at the uh, Crawford Museum Automotive. What is it? Aviation. Aviation. Automotive? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just we gotta picture go check him. That out. I picture him walking around in a bathrobe and flip flops with a newspaper <laughs> under his arm, you know, going, Good morning, everybody. You're like, you, <laughs> you are probably right. All right. Well, everyone uh, is has stuck around at this point uh, to be in the future with us to find out what happened with the auction on this amazing Ferrari. Oh, or actually, Fiat, Fiat. You know, I, Fiat. I just can't help yeah. but call it a Ferrari because oh, it oh, sure it looks is. like one. It, it is a poor man's Ferrari, um, but you get all the Ferrari thrills and all the Ferrari repair bills, mm. um, but only a fraction of the purchase price. <clears throat> Our 1968 Fiat Dino Spider on Bring a Trailer did really well. Uh, the car sold. Uh, let's review. Bradley Brannell was the high bidder at 149000 mm. You uh, were the middleman at 145000 and neither of you listened to the expert, this mm. guy, who has owned one of these cars before? Uh, I came in at one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Our car sold at for one hundred thirty-eight thousand five hundred dollars on a uh, pretty mediocre twenty bids on Bring a Trailer. Um, I I think that's kind of the right price for this car. Like I said, JP, it's nice. Like the studio shots make it look good. I don't think silver is a strong color for this car. Certainly, it looks great in these images, um, but I don't think the car looks as good on the road in silver. Um, I think this is such a, a sexy and sensual car that it needs something a little brighter than silver, which is very industrial looking. Um, there was a, a few other little wonky things on the car um, that I think held it back from being a hundred and fifty or one hundred and sixty thousand dollar example. We're also experiencing a softening in the market um, and. I, you made a really strong point about the guy that can afford a car like this um, isn't necessarily as affected by the um, the softening of the market at large or the you know the softening of the economy as we're seeing as everything's slowing down. But um, this isn't this just isn't a blue chip collectible. You know, I think your hundred and fifty thousand dollars could go farther on a different make and model. So I, I to me that number makes sense. I and I I won this one so. Uh, anyway, good value for the money at $138,000. You certainly couldn't restore one for that much. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's not just that. I mean, because like one hundred fifty grand, uh, that's a lot of money, but it's not yeah. really a lot of money. It's certainly not a lot of money in the collector car world. Right. So I think that just whittles down this car to the enthusiast that knows what it is and really wants one. Um, yeah. And they probably have their pick at this point because how many people are really looking for the Fiat version, the Dino versus the <laughs> Ferrari version? So what year did this? Did they start calling it the Ferrari? And what and how different is that car, and how much would that be worth? Well, uh, so it, it, it's a really interesting point, JP. So they made this car for basically it took two years, sixty-seven and sixty-eight, with a two-liter aluminum block, aluminum heads. Hmm. Uh, a couple years later, in seventy and seventy-one, they made another batch of two forty-six versions of this car uh, that had an independent rear suspension and the iron block two point four liter motor with a little more power. Ferrari also made an aluminum bodied aluminum block two liter Dino and those cars JP from mm. 66 67 and 68 those cars are 600 to 800 thousand wow. dollars 246 Dinos which they made like 3,000 of um, are still in that like 380 to 500 thousand dollar range. Um, for the 246s, of which there are a ton of, but those original aluminum uh, two liter Dinos uh, that are really kind of the sister car or cousin car to this, they bring stupid money in the secondary market because they're very rare, uh, very sought after, and ultra lightweight. They're like, they're really cool cars. Um, and my, you don't see them very often. I didn't notice this before, but the stereo in this thing, isn't that one of those like literally $35 eBay specials, classic probably, stereo probably. specials? Yeah. You're going to put yeah, that bad. in this car? That's crazy. Well, and they, they, the Dino album, the, the yellow Dino emblem on the back deck lid of the car. And it's just, like I said, stupid things like that, I think really held this car back. I mean, 
you know, if they had just done this as faithful to the original as possible, um, I think they would have gotten maybe a few. They may might have left a couple dollars on the table. A two liter engine. Um, I mean, how how much different is the driving experience between this and like a Fiat? 124 spider <laughs> well a fiat 124 spider is like an 85 to 100 horsepower car maybe yeah. some of them have 110 if you build a motor in one of those with dual carbs and hot cams you're looking at like 140 horsepower this car was rated at 160 horsepower but it's okay. the exact same engine that came in the ferrari dino two liter which was rated at 180 horsepower and everybody thinks enzo made sure that fiat wouldn't say this car had the same horsepower as a ferrari mm. uh, and that this car really makes 180 horsepower the other thing th this this motor was essentially designed by his son who died of leukemia but the the son designed this motor as his thesis at the turin engineering school or whatever so when his son died Enzo decided to race the motor that his son uh, designed, and they built mm. it. So this is a double overhead cam, chain-driven cams. This motor, JP, sounds so incredible when you're driving down the road. You can hear all the gear noise and all the chain-driven cams. It's an unbelievable motor to drive. Three big Weber carburetors on uh, in between the V and dual exhaust coming out of the back. I mean, it is, it, it's pretty freaking awesome. This is a really cool car to drive. Well, then that, I mean, look, I... A hundred, a hundred and forty something thousand dollars. Um, it seems like if you want something, I mean, what do you get in Ferrari for that kind of money? Uh, I mean, you can wind up in three fifty five land or something like that. But yeah. you're not going to get something yeah. classic like this. No, you get the probably the nicest six speed manual three fifty five Spider would probably be your your best and most exhilarating driving experience to compare to this for the money. But not even remotely close to the same kind of, I mean, th there's just apples to oranges. I mean, um, it's yeah. kind of a borderline modern Ferrari versus something that is just fully classic. I mean, this just has, yeah. is super, I know that it would have looked better in Ferrari red or something like that, but I got to tell you for, uh, yeah, I, I, I love the silver. I mean, I think it's, yeah. it's subtle and not a lot of people are going to notice what it is, but it just looks so classy. I don't know. This car is beautiful. It sounds to me like someone kind of got a deal because uh, it's very easy to change that badge and a couple little things. And now, like you said, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'd sure like to experience one, get behind the wheel of one. I, I, I have no we'll idea get what you. this car's like to drive. That's going to happen. Rafi's got one that's coming out of paint up. And All right. maybe we'll do some ads for him and, and you drive it. You, you'll be like, holy shit. I look forward to that. All right, guys, what do you think of the results of this? For uh, I keep calling her Ferrari. This Fiat <laughs> Dino. Uh, man, this uh, I, I like this car just because it's just yeah. like low rent Ferrari. That would be, that's me, I guess. Uh, uh, boy. Uh, do you think this thing was bought well? Was this an opportunity for someone to get into to a really classy ride for not a lot of money, r relatively? Uh, let's be honest. Uh, or is this something that someone's just overpaying for uh, just another Fiat found on road? Or what was the, uh, was it fix it again, Tony? Yeah, that's exactly. Old, uh, that's the old adage. <laughs> All right, guys, let us know in the comments below. Uh, we've been getting some really, really good comments lately. Uh, people are, are kind of nailing their bids. Uh, they're, I think they're better at this than us, Deeb. We really got to start keep track on the show and, and do yeah. some shout-outs for them here in the next couple weeks. Uh, swag. But, uh, we, we all swag. swag. We're working swag. on the swag. Uh, hit the subscribe, like, notification button if you haven't already. We know a lot of people are watching that aren't subscribed. What the heck, man? Come on. Join the herd. You are a nerd, so spread the word. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Thanks, Thanks brother. <laughs>